Hi, thanks for making it uh, on a rainy Saturday morning. I'd like to begin by asking you all quite an intimate question. Can anyone who's ever taken contraception please raise their hand? That's what I thought. Where are the boys? Well, actually, good male contraception has never received enough funding to be properly developed and used. But the good news is that this can and will be changed. The responsibility lies in our hands. But before getting into any of this, let me tell you a story. In the late 1950s, a group of controversial scientists and Margaret Sanger, a feminist, went to Puerto Rico. Sanger believed that women would never be liberated unless they could control their bodies. And so came the very first contraceptive trial. Enovid, the first pill, contained 10 times the hormones than the pills we take today. It was tested on a group of women who couldn't consent because they weren't even told that they were participating in a medical trial. And so what happened? Well, these women faced unbearable side effects like blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, and three died. The scientists chose Puerto Rico knowing that the population was undergoing severe poverty and that they could treat these women like guinea pigs and that no one would bat an eyelid. And that is actually what happened. But things have changed, right? The pills that we take today have nowhere near the amount of hormones than Enovid had. And we have choice, like the ring, the patch, the IUD. But the pill is still one of the most used contraceptives in the world. It's quite miraculous to think that a pill which once killed women is now completely unproblematic and void of any side effects. Well, as you might have guessed, this is far from being the case. I personally first found this out by talking to my friends. One had developed a blood clot. Another had gained 20 kilos, developed cystic acne, and endured terrible migraines. A third one had finally found the pill, the pill that worked for her. But this was after five years, six pills, and too many depressive episodes. I, I couldn't believe this. Or maybe I just didn't want to. So I decided to carry out my own research. And what I found shocked me. There are studies demonstrating that women who take the pill are 50% more likely to be diagnosed with depression or anxiety, and 40% more likely to be prescribed antidepressants. These side effects can and do ruin women's lives. And it just feels like no one is really talking about it. Is it because it's taboo to talk about sex? Or because we feel thankful for having these options? Or is it because there simply is no other choice? Contraception is imperfect. I rest my case. But a world with imperfect contraception is so much better than one without. And sadly, contraception is still a luxury, one that activists fought for us to have, one that too many women, about 190 million, still do not have access to. Just a couple of weeks ago, contraception was banned in Afghanistan. The effects that this will have on women be drastic. When reading about this, you don't want to complain about side effects. You feel thankful for having these options. But gratitude should never overshadow truth nor pain, nor should it normalize the one-sided responsibility that contraception is. 
Why does the burden just rest on women? After all, it takes two to tango. Contraception is a responsibility that should involve everyone, including men. Nowadays, there are only two male contraceptive options, condoms and vasectomies. These methods were developed 200 years ago. This right here is thought to be the very first condom. Condoms are great if used properly, but unfortunately, they fail in 13% of cases because of misuse. Vasectomies, they're not always reversible, so that's that. But having better options of male contraception would benefit everyone, including men. It would bring men further into the realm of reproduction and allow them to alleviate the burden that's rested on women for too many years. There is currently a gross imbalance in managing contraception, but there is also a clear opportunity to correct this imbalance. And the crazy thing is that we've had the tools, the science, the methods to do this for many years. There are trials that have shown that we have vasal gels, heat pads, and even male contraceptive pills that exist and are 99% efficient in preventing pregnancy. They're effective, but not accessible. When I first started researching this topic, I thought, great, but would men take, use these methods? And if they do, would women trust them to, for example, take the pill in the same way that they do? Well, actually, there are really optimistic studies now showing that the demand is there. The demand is there, and women would trust their partners. And this is besides the point, because these arguments don't justify the inexistence of these methods. And that brings me to why I'm standing here today. I don't want to force any man to take a pill that he doesn't want to take, or to urge women to reject their contraception. I want to question the gendered inequality regarding contraception and urge you to do so too. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, my newsfeed gets bombarded with posts, articles about this topic. Male contraception, it's here. It's going to revolutionize life as we know it. I first thought that this topic was quite revolutionary, that I had found my niche. Until I read Margaret Sanger's speech, where she claims that contraception is a right that everyone should have access to, women, and men. She wrote this in 1921. That was more than a hundred years ago. I then found articles like this one, right here, claiming that the male birth control pill has been invented in China in 1979. That was more than 20 years before I was born. Or this one, we now have non-hormonal options looks promising, 2012. And these two? Well, they were published just a couple of weeks ago by The Economist and Vice, and they claim that we've taken an important step forward in the development of male contraception, of better male contraception. And then what? I'll show you. Nothing. Nothing. This topic is not revolutionary. We've been trying to develop these methods for decades. So why haven't, been, why haven't we been able to? There are many reasons why. Let's just focus on two. Number one, side effects. The inevitable presence of side effects. 
side effects no worse than those women endured today. Not in the 1950s, today. These side effects have derailed clinical trials for better male contraception. Frankly, it's insulting to me, to you, and to all the women who have suffered from these side effects. The second reason, funding. If pharmaceutical companies had decided to fund better male contraception, I wouldn't be standing here today. However, there is no incentive for them to fund a product that they don't have a guarantee will give them an interesting return on their investment. They already own the market because of female contraception. So why cannibalize your own market share? This issue is not one of profit. It is one of public health, of equality, of choice, of real choice. And so our focus shifts. It shifts from corporate to government. After all, this topic concerns more than 50% of the population. But the truth is that it's very unlikely for governments to wake up tomorrow and decide to fund this. So this is where we come in. Because Governments are notorious for responding quickly to public opinion by talking about it, an issue worth sharing, an idea worth spreading, will put pressure on governments to bring this to the forefront and develop better male contraception, something that could have been and should have been done years ago. Whether you would take it or you wouldn't, the choice should still exist. Thank you.